Right below this video in the description. We're gonna start out with these two layers, the photo frame background and the snow border. I have them on two separate layers, of course. And what we wanna do is we wanna isolate this black area and release the Z key. It'll bring me back to the pen tool, which I had selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. Click on one corner and click on the next. Hold the space bar, pan down, complete that path. Now the color of the shape really doesn't matter, so I'm just gonna make it red just so that you can see it. There it is, red. What I'm gonna do now is enable the layer for the snow border. I'm gonna click and drag her up to the top of the layers panel. And I'm also gonna double tap here on the zoom tool just so we can see the image at 100%. And actually, now that I'm looking at it at 100%, I'm actually gonna right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I can see the entire composition. Then I'm gonna press Control J, Command J and the Mac to duplicate. So now I have two copies. I'm gonna disable the one on the top by clicking on this eye icon and the one on the bottom here. I'm gonna clip to the shape below it. So with that layer selected, I'm gonna press Control, Alt, G, Command, Option, G on the back. Then I'm gonna enable the layer right above the snow border. So I'm gonna click on the quick selection tool and I'm simply gonna click and drag around her. Now you don't have to be very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag and we'll worry about the details later. So we're just gonna select her as quick as we can. So I'm just clicking and dragging. And notice that my selection is not very accurate. You shouldn't spend too much time at this moment. If you select an area like drag, just to refine that selection just a little bit more. have the selection active around the snow border. I'm gonna select that top layer and click on the layer mask icon to create a mask around the snow border. So what I'm gonna do now is click on the top layer, hold shift and click on the layer below it so they're both selected. And I'm gonna click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do is when you move one of those layers with the move tool, it moves both. And they can be in different groups and they can be separated so that allows us to keep those two layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Control T, Command T to transform, to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you want to click and drag on, you can press Control 0, that's Command 0 in the Mac, for the bird's eye view that allows you to see all four corner handles. And I'm going to click and drag on this one here to scale it down by holding Shift, Alt, that Shift option on the Mac. Now at this point, we can go back and adjust the layer mask if we need to. So I'm gonna zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around her body. So we can adjust that by clicking on the layer mask in the properties panel. You can click on mask edge. If you don't see the properties panel, you can go into window, properties. Click on mask edge and we'll get a better selection. So now it didn't do that good of a job here. So. I'm just gonna leave it like this for now and then I can come back with the brush tool in. And I know I'm selecting some of the sky, but that's okay. I'm gonna get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard, which swaps the foreground and background color. And with black, I'm gonna paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky here. I'm not gonna take the time to do so now. I will do that after the tutorial and you can see the final image, but I'm just gonna go around the entire image and just make sure that everything is masked out accordingly and in most of these areas everything seems to be okay i know we got it's extra elements that are going to help our composite look much more realistic and much more interesting so from the adobe stock library i downloaded two elements we're going to use we're going to use this shovel with the snow so let me just double click on that to open that up and by the way the links to these files are on the description you have to download them from Adobe Stock. They're not free, but you can use a watermark preview to practice on. So I would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn. So the first thing I gotta do is get rid of the shovel. I'm gonna click on the lasso tool. I'm gonna make a selection around the shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. Okay, 
then I can hold shift and backspace or you can go into edit fill to bring up the fill menu under contents you can start making adjustments to it the first thing I'm going to do is fill with white um, the areas that I want to keep for sure so with the lasso tool selected I'm just going to click and drag and make a very rough selection on the areas that I know for sure I want to keep which is all this top part here now that I have a selection active I can fill with white white is currently my foreground color to fill with the foreground color you can hold alt backspace option backspace on the mac then control d command d on the mac to deselect now we gotta work on this bottom part there's a feature in photoshop called apply image if you go into image apply image what apply image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto itself using a blend mode in this case we're taking the blue copy applying the screen blend mode onto itself so notice what happens here on the snow on the edge it essentially turns white which is what we want you could also of course apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result in this case i think i'm going to go with screen and then and what i'm going to do now is go into image adjustment levels and bring the levels to the right the dark values to the right so we have more contrast between the snow and the ground and remember, we're going to be making a selection. Anything that's white in this screen will be selected. Anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm going to drag this one over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well. And press OK. Now, what I'm going to do now is click on the brush tool. Select black. Increase the size of my brush. And just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply. And notice the light is coming from the right the light on her face is coming from the right and so is the light hitting the frame so you sort of want to match that with the shadow so the shadows will be on the left side sort of like here behind the frame so this is what this is showing so if I were to bring it up to 100% this is what that looks like obviously that's too much so I'll leave it at about 25% or so and what I'm going to do now is right above this snow element here I'm going to create a new layer and I'm just going to paint with this color here under the board so you can click on the eyedropper tool select that color and maybe make it a little bit darker because it's too light so, and actually let me drag this layer up on top of the group and just continue painting that shadow that's coming off the board so maybe something like this and then change the blend mode to multiply and bring that shadow way down so maybe something like that now the only difference between the final image that you saw in the beginning and this one is that with the final image I took a little more time working with the mask a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better but these are I'm gonna use this one right down here again control C to copy and paste that in the Mac control zero Command zero on the Mac and scale this one here or so. But I want this one to be in the back. So I'm gonna click and drag this one, place it way back here. Up right in this area. That's because this element needs to be right here. It needs to be in between the layer that's popping out of the subject and the layer that is clipped to the vector. So right in between those two. So now the snow follows through into the frame. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to work with shadows. So first of all, the snow here on the table, it needs a shadow. So I'm going to open up this group. So we'll click on the snow layer here and click on drop shadow. Notice a little drop shadow there. You can use the settings that I have here if you like. Notice that I'm not using black, I'm using a dark burgundy color, which is similar to that color you see right there, right under the frame. And just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply. And notice the light is coming from the right. The light on her face is coming from the right. And so is the light hitting the frame. So you sort of want to match that with the shadow. So the shadows will be on the left side. Sort of like here behind the frame. So this is what this is showing. So if I were to bring it up to 100%, this is what that looks like. Obviously that's too much. So I'll leave it at about 25% or so. And what I'm going to do now is right above this snow element here, I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to paint with this color here under the board. So you can click on the 
eyedropper tool to like that color and maybe make it a little bit darker because it's too light. Something like that and just continue that shadow that's coming off the board. And actually let me drag this layer up on top of the group and just continue painting that shadow that's coming off the board. So maybe something like this. And then change the blend mode to multiply and bring that shadow way down. So maybe something like that. Now the only difference between the final image that you saw in the beginning and this one is that with the final image I took a little more time working with the mask, a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better. To Instagram with the hashtag PT screen and then I'll just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm gonna press OK and what I'm gonna do now is go into image adjustment levels and bring the levels to the right the dark valley to the right so we have more contrast between the snow and the ground and remember we're going to be making a selection anything that's white in this screen will be selected anything that is black will be deselected so i'm gonna drag this one over to the left a little bit i'm looking at the edges here and maybe drag this one to the left as well and press ok now what i'm going to do now is click on the brush tool so like black as my foreground color so I can paint with black. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by clicking on the right bracket key on the keyboard. And I'm just going to paint with black. And again, you don't have to be very accurate. As long as you get close enough, you should be good. And once again, I'm going to go into image, adjustment, levels, and darken up some of the darker pixels and brighten up the midtones a little bit. And press OK. So this selection looks like it'll work. So I'm gonna press Control, Command on the Mac, click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it. Go back into the Layers panel, on the background layer, which is the only layer that we have in this document. I'm gonna click on the new layer mask icon and notice now that the floor is no longer there. Now it's not a perfect selection, but it's gonna work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors and I think we're gonna be able to get away with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on the layer, select the move tool, click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab and coming down and releasing and there's our file. It's a really big layer so we're going to need to scale it down. Control T, Command T in the back, transform, we can't see the corner handles so I'm going to press Control 0, Command 0 in the back, there's the corner handles. And now I'm going to adjust them accordingly. I'm holding shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm going to right click on it and choose flip horizontal. And from here I can match the scene a little bit better. And I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose distort just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press Z on the keyboard, right click, fit to screen. Then I'm going to press V on the keyboard for, to get the move tool and maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next, work with the previous. So. What I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the lasso tool and I'm going to select this element first. So I'm going to select it, go to edit and copy or you can press control C. I'm going to deselect that element, control D, command D on the Mac. Go back into the file that we're working with and I'm going to paste it here. Control V, command V on the Mac and there it is. As you can see it's a high resolution file which is good. I'm going to change the blend mode to screen so the black pixels disappear and we only keep the bright pixels, in this case the snow. Then I'm going to press Ctrl T, Command C to transform, Ctrl 0, Command 0 for bird's eye view, and I'm going to scale this element down. I'm going to press Ctrl 0, Command 0 again, zoom back in, and I'm going to just rotate it and make it fit accordingly. Now in this case, I'm going to flip it horizontally. So right click on it, flip horizontally, and keep rotating it. So 
maybe something something like this. And I, I can, you know, scale it more if I need to or rotate it more if I need to. So whatever distortions I need to do for it to work. So maybe something like that. So I just press enter to accept that transformation. And I'm going to use one more element. I'm going to use this one right down here. Again, control C to copy and paste that in here. Change the blend mode to screen. Control T to transform. That's command in the Mac. Control zero. Command zero on the Mac. And scale this one in as well. And I'm gonna zoom in and rotate this one into position. Maybe right about here or so. But I want this one to be in the back. So I'm gonna click and drag this one and place it way back here. And I'm gonna press V to select the move tool and I'm gonna move it around just to fit it into position. So maybe something like this. And actually I just realized that I made a mistake. Notice how this element gets cut off right in this area. That's because this element needs to be right here. It needs to be in between the layer that's popping out of the subject and the layer that is clipped to the vector. So right in between those two. So now the snow follows through into the frame. And now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to work with shadows. So first of all, the snow here on the table, it needs a shadow. So I'm going to open up this group. So we'll click on the snow layer here. And click on drop shadow. Notice a little drop shadow there. You can use the settings that I have here if you like. Notice that I'm not using black. I'm using a dark burgundy color, which is similar to that color you see right there, right under the frame and just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply and notice the light is coming from the right the light on her face is coming from the right and so is the light hitting the frame so you sort of want to match that with the shadow so the shadows will be on the left side sort of like here behind the frame so this is what this is showing so if I were to bring it up to 100% this is what that looks like obviously that's too much so leave it at about 25% or so and what I'm going to do now is right above this snow element here I'm going to create a new layer and I'm just going to paint with this color here under the board so you can click on the eyedropper tool select that color and maybe make it a little bit darker because it's too light something like that and just continue that shadow that's coming off the board and actually let me drag this layer up on top of the group and just continue painting that shadow that's coming off the board so maybe something like this and then change the blend mode to multiply and bring that shadow way down so maybe something like that now the only difference between the final image that you saw in the beginning and this one is